Hello, today we're going to be uh, mounting a set of uh, whitetail antlers onto our uh, whitetail skull. Um, we now have four sizes, the small, uh, medium with small pedicles, the regular medium, and a large. All the uh, sizes are on the website too, which will give the dimensions and everything of the pedicles. Uh, also, we have the camo dipped, and the uh, one of our most popular patterns right now is this uh, um, amendments pattern. We always we try to attempt to get the uh, second amendment on the front of the nose. So that was their choice uh, for this uh, mount. And uh, what we'll do first is uh, we're gonna tape off the antlers. We'll start back here on the G2. I can hold it. Uh, G2 out to the main beam to the tip. And then we'll start on the other side. Across to the front tip. And then one of the things I'll usually do too is uh, just tape it across the middle. And this one kind of has a broken. Uh, brow tine on it, so normally what I do is I tape between the brow tines too, so when you cut this off it also holds that uh, distance between there. But when you have, or you may not have the brow tine, then you can just go between the main beams on the bottom. So we'll go across the main beam on that one, and then we could probably catch the uh, brow tine over here. Now, with that, the whole purpose of taping that off is when we cut this off, we pull that tight, that's going to keep pretty much the same distance, your spread and location of the uh, antlers. So, the next step is, is we will uh, take and uh, cut these off. And what I normally use is the uh, multi-tool, and it'll obviously get a little bit noisy. So that's what we normally do, cut it off right at the base like that, just under the burrs. I'll go ahead and uh, cut the other side and then uh, tell you what we're going to do from there. Okay, so now we've got them both cut off. They're kind of flush like that at the bottom. Um, so the skull plate itself, you can see the distance. These, our skulls, I extended these for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, that way if you have a set of antlers that's wider than uh, what you need um, and they kind of actually flare out a little bit also. So what normally is going to happen after we drill the antlers uh, and set these on here, you can already tell the angle is going to need to be changed a little bit on these and plus brought down in to right about there. So. But that's the whole reason these are extended, in case you have a larger set of antlers that are higher or have longer pedicles. So, uh, so that's what we'll do next is uh, we'll drill these out. Um, 
and then I will grind a uh, side out and I'll show you how to do that. All right, so obviously we put it in the vise to take a towel, put it around the antlers, and then uh, lock it in the vise, obviously, so you don't uh, have to hold it to drill it. All right, I use also uh, different antlers, uh, uh, different sizes. I'm using a 5 8 uh, wood bit, the paddle bit, as you can see. Um, you can use a regular drill bit if you want. Uh, it obviously just start in the center. So the thing you also want to do is to make sure you are following the main beam so that you don't drill out through it. Um, the other thing we will do is take one of the pins and we can check the depth. This is pretty good right there. About that much sticking out. You know you have room to play. Again I'll show you once we put it in the uh, skull itself. Alright so I'll drill out the other side and uh, uh, and then uh, what we'll do is we'll grind out. I'll show you what, what I do with this with grinding that part out. All right. So once we've got the got the holes drilled out, obviously uh, the pins come with it to square stock, and uh, uh, they come smooth. What I normally do is I'll take a uh, put them on the grinder and just cut little uh, edges out the edges off of them. That makes sure that it grabs when you put the bondo in. Uh, but just for reference, uh, again, take the pins, you stick them in. And uh, just make sure you got some sticking out there. What I like to do is uh, I'll grind this out and make it angled uh, so that it kind of fits over the pedicles, also. It's less clean up. So I'll show you how to do one of those. And what I use is the uh, um, is a carbide uh, the towel bit. I normally get that at Lowe's. Uh, so the eighth inch bit, you can either use it on the hand electric grinder or uh, the air die grinder. Alright, so that's the way I normally do it uh, on one side, and you don't always have to. Um, just actually, some of these will, uh, once you adjust the pedicles when they're on there, can actually lay uh, flush on that. But as you can see right now, we're obviously going to need to uh, grind and change the angle of the uh, skull itself. So I'll uh, grind that other one back out and get back with you. Okay, so here's the what they are finished that way. Also, uh, both drilled out, uh, grinding the edges off in here. Again, may help in uh, fitting over top of the pedicles on the reproduction skull. Um, and this is where, when you make the measurement uh, to get one of the skulls, this is what the measurement is. Obviously, is from the one edge of the pedicle to the other. So that's where you want to try and get that in between these burrs, just to pick what size skull you want. So, uh, so the next thing we're going to do is uh, obviously, like I said, with the pins in the skull, we're going to set this on. And as you notice, again, we've got that angle in there. So 
what I'm going to do next is uh, grind this uh, off. You can either do it uh, with a sander. Uh, if you don't have uh, a belt sander, you can use a uh, regular palm sander. Um, we'll, we'll sand these uh, pedicles down. Uh, belt sander works better, uh, which I will more than likely use. It gets cuts it down a lot quicker. Uh, these are solid plastic. I'll show you a cutaway version. So this is uh, half of the skull, uh, and when it's cut in half, obviously there's uh, it's solid plastic. So um, you, it grinds pretty much just like wood when you grind it down. It doesn't melt down. Um, and as you can see. You can take one of these half skulls and use it on sheds so that you, when you only find the one side of the shed. So, all right, I will uh, grind the angle on this other skull and be back with you on that. All right, so I ground that down, changed. As you can see, the difference that we did between this is the way they normally come with that amount of pedicle, um, and change the angle to grind it down. So once it's on. As you can see, it makes a better fit. And there's not as much uh, cleanup to do after that. I can feel a little bit in the back. But another thing that I will do is uh, I will uh, also round these edges off some too. Again, that's why you cove this out on the uh, antlers and so it would fit down over a little bit and again make a smoother fit. So I'll do that and I'll uh, be back with you on that one. Alright, so we already rounded to one side and what I'll do is I'll round the other again just using the same. Okay, so now once they are rounded off, uh, what I I mount mine on a uh, board that I use for, uh, just uh, to show it easier to handle once the antlers are on. So, but what I'm going to have to do this already comes with a pre-drilled hole we use when we dip them. Um, one of the other things that it works good for is it's already drilled. For we also have these uh, railroad spike hangers. Uh, it just fits right on there and. Uh, We'll show you what it looks like hanging also with the antlers on. Um, makes it pretty simple. Um, but what I'm going to do, I need to pre-drill a hole uh, to mount it on the board. So you, anytime you're uh, going to attach one of these skulls with a screw or anything, uh, make sure you drill a pilot hole. Because uh, if you just drill the screw right into it, it could split. Alright, so I mounted that on the board just so it's easier to work with. Again, once the pins are ground, uh, again, I'll put it in and then check this again one more time once they're on here so that uh, that fits, which is pretty good. Again, uh, I'll show you once they're on uh, how to uh, fill in and uh, clean up the edges. Because uh, obviously this one here, let me show you to the side here once it's turned here. So you can see there's a little bit in the back. So these pedicles on these skulls might have been just a little bit too big. Um, but uh, we can uh, fix that uh, once uh, the antlers are set on the skull itself. So Next thing we're going to do is uh, mix up uh, the Bondo. There's uh, multiple ways uh, people put the antlers on. I use uh, Bondo. This can be picked up at uh, Walmart. And obviously, you can get it in the cork can, so I, I do enough that I buy it by the gallon. Uh, you can either use the standard body filler. Uh, also, the uh, fiberglass works well. Um, uh, some guys use 5-minute epoxy. Uh, I've heard multiple ways that 
they do it. I use Bondo, it gets a little bit thicker uh, and it's not as runny. Uh, so what you want to do is uh, mix up. You don't need a whole lot, but then you also don't want to short yourself. And uh, The amount of hardener you use is again based on how fast you want it to set and you also same thing you don't want it too fast you don't want it too slow because uh, what I normally do is uh, hold the antlers into place uh, while it sets. Now I also uh, I do both uh, sides at one time I may recommend the first time you do it is you do one side at a time um, like you said, if you start doing a bunch of these, you'll realize that you can kind of do both at the same time. So I'll show you how I normally do both. See, that probably a little of a hot mix, as pink as that is, so we won't try and mess around with getting that put in the holes. And what I'll start off with first also is I'll do it in the, uh, in the skulls. Take the pins out. Um, the one thing that's nice about uh, the dip skulls is I put uh, automotive clear coat on it, so it uh, if you get it on there, it, it wipes off pretty easy. The other thing I'll do is I'll take the pin and uh, just start working that in there. Spinning it, make sure that it gets up against the sides of the of the skull itself, or the the hole inside. And I think I made this too hot. So, yeah, maybe not. Alright, so once you got the Bondo in the holes, what I will do is uh, take the antlers and set them on to make sure the pins are in the right spot also. So this is the fun part where you sit here and you hold the antlers until uh, the Bondo sets. As you can see, this set of antlers, these tips are awful close. So. All right, so that's uh, the other part. Normally, you know, about five, ten minutes. Uh, once they're set, um, I'll take the antlers back off. Then I will fill the uh, the antlers with the bondo, and uh, we'll set those. So, all right, uh, the bondo is pretty well set. I like I said, I normally hold the antlers here also just to make sure that the pins are in the right position because if you just put the pins in and take your antlers off and they should happen to fall to one side and you try and put the antlers back on again and it doesn't match up and that's not a good thing. So uh, what we'll do next is uh, we'll mix up some more bondo, put it in the antlers themselves and uh, uh, go through the same process of holding it on the skull because once it's in there same thing if you pull this out tight pull your antlers apart where that all the tape is uh, stretched tight again it's almost uh, the same as it comes off of the skull plate when you cut it in the first place okay second batch of Bondo is mixed up uh, again what I would do is uh, uh, once you put the pins in the skull itself uh, give it about 20 minutes before you put the antlers on uh, that way this definitely sets up and hardens uh, otherwise again if it's not then the pins may want to tend to move if it's not hardened the whole way and then you have to start all over again so what we'll do next is we'll fill up the uh, antlers and what I like to do is take a piece of wire and uh, work that down in there That way uh, it's up against the edges of the uh, 
the hole a little bit around that way when the pins go in it's bonding to the antler itself too and we need just a little bit more in that one And again, this is another judgment call as to how much to put in. Because if you put too much in and it squirts out the side once your pins push it out. Um, and then, again, this is why I kind of recommend actually doing one at a time. Uh, that way you can uh, wipe it off and not get caught with them setting up on you. Alright, so that side's filled. I'm going to fill the other side. Again, run the pin down or the wire down. Get it up against the sides of the antlers. Obviously, so it all pushes down in and it all bonds. Make sure you get all the air bubbles out, obviously. Because again, if you don't uh, get this push down in and the air bubbles out, again, it won't uh, it won't set up and the antler may turn on you. So what we'll do now, and we'll put these up on. Oh, that's why it was not moving around. All right. There we go. So now it's tight up against that. Again, let me turn this here. So you can see what we got in the back. So we'll have a little bit of a gap. We can pull this back some on the back side. And again, like I said, I'll show you how to fix that on the end also. Um, most of the time that's up on the wall. But now the waiting game again, pull the tape tight. Uh, and now you just got to wait for the bondo to set and again this is where uh, you want to try to be uh, not to move too much because if you're moving when that bondo flashes then again it might the antlers might have a tendency to turn on you and be loose uh, that's another good reason to you know if you put it on the board where the skull is not moving around uh, then you can hold it tight and just sit here and relax all right all right so we let the antler set they're still taped together um, I would recommend leaving them set overnight uh, that way you know they're definitely solid now but uh, I mean you can let it go for a couple hours and then uh, uh, take the tape off the antlers We'll get this out of the way. I think you guys can figure out how to take the tape off. All right, so all the tape's off. Again, they're pretty solid there. So uh, if you have any part of a gap in the back, um, what you could do is we take epoxy sculpt. Uh, it's two part. I've already mixed it together. Uh, same amount each side, each part rather. So, and then I just make a full string of it, and just start going around the base. And some of these you can actually, if you got part of a the burr that is off. Or you want to build the burr up to make it look better you can do that um, but yeah just fill that around I usually take a little bit of water help smooth it out I'll come up in and just push it right up against the bottom of the burr so this is where we're 
where more of the gap was, so just go up to the gap. And then you can just kind of sculpt that in to make it look like burrs. And if you uh, do the burrs, you can stain it with, I usually use like a water-based uh, uh, walnut. But, yeah, just scrape that right up to the top and fill in the bottom of that. And then, you know, a lot of times here I just break this right off. A little bit of a gap there. You can see. Or the other thing, uh, when you're using a white skull, um, just take uh, some white acrylic paint and uh, after this epoxy sculpt dries, you can paint it. With the camo dip skull, it's really easy because you can, uh, brown, a darker brown usually works good to uh, just touch up anything around where the gap was at and it blends right in. This Now with these uh, amendment skulls, what I will normally do, since this is, you can see like this in the uh, We the People part uh, is gray, so what I would do uh, is take an airbrush and use like a, a black and just shade it into uh, the epoxy skull and uh, it'll all blend right in. And again, it depends how technical you get, and every, every antler is different. Some of them just fit perfectly right over top. Uh, as you can see on that one up there, that just fits right over top of the pedicle. Um, we could have maybe went with a smaller pedicle on this, but I think it was like right in between. It would be better to have the bigger pedicle and just fill those gaps. All right, so we've got it all filled in, uh, and then what I will do is I'll let that set, and uh, um, I'll shade this one kind of like a grayish color. But uh, that's completed. Done the goo. All I gotta do. Hangs up perfect on the spike, and here you go. Completed mount.